the year is 1839, and the telephone hasn't been invented. Well, of course she can't hear you. You're too far away. If you need to reach someone far away, you'll have to write a letter and send it in the mail. And that could take days. Luckily, one person is figuring a way to change all that. Oh, I hope it wasn't something urgent, young lady. <laughs> Engineers, ah, summer is right around the corner. You can practically taste it. It's around this time in the year where most of my students would be doing some programming in class. And one of the topics we talk about is code or coding. Coding is how a computer understands what we want it to do. Computers don't naturally understand us. They understand code. So when we program, we're taking our thoughts and ideas and turning them into a way that the computer understands them. Years ago, before there were text messages or email or even phones, the only way to send a message to someone really far away was by sending them a letter or visiting them in person. And that could take a very long time. But then somebody realized that you could use little bursts of electricity to send a signal across a wire. Hmm, it got people thinking. The problem was, bzz, 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 doesn't really send a message to anyone, does it? And then this guy came up with a really clever idea. He was an inventor and an artist. His name was Samuel Morse. He wondered if there was a way to encode a message in those little bursts of electricity. He brainstormed and came up with the idea to turn letters into codes and then send those codes across the electric wires. So he created a device called the telegraph, which could send little bursts of electricity across the wire. He also created a system. Today we call it the Morse code where each letter is represented by dots or dashes of electricity. And then in 1844, he sent a message on a piece of wire that went from our nation's capital, Washington, D.C., all the way to Baltimore, Maryland. That's about 40 miles away, and it worked. Can you imagine sending a message the distance of 800 New York City blocks away? Over the next few years, there'd be some minor improvements to the Morse code to make it easier for people to use, but his technology was a success. So if you ever want to thank him or say hi, take a walk over in Central Park to 72nd Street and 5th Avenue, where you see a statue that bears the name Morse. And you can say hi, or you could say dot 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 dot. I'm going to show you how to encode a letter in Morse code. So I'm going to try the first letter of my first name. My name is Mike, so the first letter is M. Then I find M on the Morse code chart. Here it is. It looks like it's two dashes. So if I want to write an M in Morse code, I would write dash dash. If I wanted to write my next letter, I, I would add a space and then write dot dot, because the next letter in Mike is the letter I. How about your first letter? Take a look at the alphabet shown here, and then see the dots and dashes next to it. Those dots and dashes are your letter in Morse code. If you want to put more than one letter together, just leave a space between them. I would love to see what you can encode and send to me. Until next time, I'll see you then.